Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gina Garcia from the Business Administration Department. Welcome to another round of Pep Talk, your pre-employment preparation talk webinar series, and this is our 11th episode. Pep Talk is a regular virtual series designed to prepare the graduating students for employment by equipping them with the necessary knowledge through talks touching on various topics delivered by industry experts and professionals. And on your screens now, you can see our previous pep talk webinars. You may rewatch them on your most convenient time at the Career and Placement Facebook page. Today's webinar is being live streamed via Microsoft Teams. We are also live via FEU and CAPO official Facebook pages. To participate in the question and answer later this afternoon, you may submit your comments and questions anytime at our conversation page, which can be found at the right side of your screen if you are using a desktop, or at the live Q&A tab if you are using a mobile phone or other portable devices. For our viewers watching through the FEU Facebook live streaming, you may also post your questions on the comment section as well. For those who are watching and commenting, please use our official hashtag for today, hashtag pep talk Carlo Ople. With the advent of social media and its importance in our personal and social lives, especially at this time of pandemic, content creation has become a valuable skill that we all need to learn. Whether for personal, business, or employment, it is important to learn how to create and manage information in the cyberspace. And that is why for our pep talk episode 11, our topic is how to become an online content creator. So please stick with us until the very end of the program because you will surely learn a lot. And by the way, I would just like to remind everyone to please make sure that your microphones are on mute, especially during the lecture proper to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the rest of the program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, may I call on the Director of the Career and Placement Office to give the opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, please let us all welcome Ms. Maria Carmencita Babes Suva Alfonso. Good afternoon, ma'am. The Good screen afternoon. is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Eugenio. Um, our distinguished speaker, our Vice President, Mr. Joven Castro, our Dean's faculty members, Dean's yeah, students and co-employees, good afternoon and thank you for taking a time out of your busy schedule to join us today. The recent academic year showed us a preview of how things will be even after the pandemic, where many may, might be able to cope with easily, some may endure hardships. As we shift to a new paradigm, adapting to the so-called new normal will largely depend on how prepared we are, especially our graduates. With this, the FEU Career and Placement Office, or CAPO, has designed a 15-part series webinar to give the students the basics of working and finding a job amidst the new normal. We have also prepared and migrated online all the other CAPO activities designed to help prepare our graduates for the new world of work. Online mock interview and coaching last July, online exclusive recruitment last August, student exposure to industries this coming November, to name a few. We shall be posting all this in the official FEU social media sites and canvas. So please check out our event posters and calendars. Let me show you a short video clip of CAPO's lineup of activities for the rest of the year. Video, please. our 11th episode titled How to Become an Online Content Creator, we are grateful to have an online expert who 
will share his ideas and give us some tips. I'm sure his insights will be beneficial to our audience since content creation opens opportunities, especially for our graduates. As a skill, they can use it for their own blog or blogs, online businesses, and even for employment, as many companies are now hiring content creators who will manage their social media pages. Through this webinar, we are helping our students and graduates navigate properly and adjust to the new normal world of work. CAPO believes that this topic should be discussed to prepare our graduates and give them a better perspective of the world they are facing, one that is no longer the same as it was a few months back. Jobs may be scarce, but you can either put up your own business or you tool yourself. Um, and while it is not going to be easy to sort out the challenges in this new paradigm that we are in, always remember the mantra, be brave because Tamarows have always been resilient to whatever comes our way. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker. He is a digital marketing veteran with over 16 years of experience in advertising, gaming, TV and telecommunications company, or Telco. He currently serves as VP and Deputy Head of Public Affairs and Corporate Communications for PLDT Smart. Along his corporate life, alongside his corporate life, he is also an accomplished digital entrepreneur. He founded Unbox.ph, one of the top tech websites in the Philippines with over half a million monthly unique visitors. He also has his own YouTube channel that features technology and sneakers, which now has over 600,000 subscribers. He is also a highly sought after public speaker and media resource person. He has delivered over 1,000 talks in his career, from small classrooms of 20 to 30 ma to massive auditoriums of 10,000, like in the SMO Arena. He also delivered TEDx talks. He was named Social Media Celebrity of the Year by the Philippine Social Media Week and Digital Marketer of the Year by CMO Asia last 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to your screens, Mr. Carlo Ople. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Thanks for having me today. So, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys this afternoon. Uh, and the honor uh, is mine spending this time with you guys to talk about opportunities in the digital space. Now, before I get started and share with you the slides that I presented, konti lang naman, so chill lang kayo. Uh, I just want to preface this discussion by sharing that digital really changed my life. Yeah, following, you know, and learning digital marketing skills and learning digital business skills allowed me to have the life that I have today. And if it weren't learning those digital skills from social media to videos, to content creation, to advertising in digital, to learning the basics of digital, video editing, writing, lahat yun, I wouldn't be able to, to have uh, the place that I'm living in, the cars that I drive, the life that I was able to provide for my wife and my family. So I owe a lot of who I am today, what I do today, because of the things that I learned on digital. So let this life, whatever life that I have, be a testament to how powerful digital can be if used properly. Kumbaga, kung hindi lang ML lang inaatupag nyo, pwede kayo yumaman sa digital, di ba? So <laughs> yun yung sekreto dyan. Hindi puro ML, hindi puro Netflix. Hindi pwedeng kayo lang yung naglalaro, hindi pwedeng kayo lang yung nanonood. Kailangan kayo yung gumagawa ng game, kayo yung gumagawa ng app, kayo yung gumagawa ng video para kayo yung mayaman at hindi kayo yung pinagkakakitaan. Yun ang sikreto sa digital. And yun ang pag-uusapan natin uh, in today's session. Now, I know kasi if I use uh, full screen for uh, this particular presenter, hindi gagalaw lahat ng screens. No? So, I'll just show it like this. Pagpasensya nyo na, I'll just put down, push down every time may ako. So the title of today's presentation is Digital Tribes. How do you build uh, a content creation business or a content creator business uh, using digital tribes? Paano kakikita? Paano lalaki negosyo mo? Paano kagagaling using this particular strategy? And to get started, let me just share with you guys. Uh, in 2012, like what was mentioned in the intro, uh, I put up a website called Unbox.ph. So tung website na to, Ginawa ko to alongside being employed uh, in TV5. So back then, I was working as their head for digital and new media. And I felt that kulang pa yung uh, 
kulang pa yung sweldo. <laughs> Kasi diba, ang hirap, ang hirap mabuhay with just your salary. So I was thinking of ano ba pwede ko gawing sideline? Ano ba pwede ko gawing hustle? Ano ba pwede kong gawing way to be able to make money so that I can, you know, do the things that I wanted to do because I wanted to travel, I wanted to see the world, I wanted to to do a lot of things. And I knew that if I were to live within my salary and not try to create more, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I wanted to do. So, doon ako nag-isip. So, sige, gagawa ko na racket, gagawa ko na website. And in 2012, I put up Unbox.ph. And because of this website, I was able to travel the world. I was able to see the world. Because if you are a tech blogger or tech journalist, you get invites from companies uh, in Korea, in China, in the US, all over the world. And getting the invites and building the brand of Unbox.ph wasn't easy. It took me so many years and so many articles. In fact, if I take a look at the dashboard of Unbox, I think I've written over 10,000 articles to date. So, ganung kadaming uh, articles na or blogs ang nasulat ko in the short amount of time uh, I've been uh, running the website. So, again, that's on top of my day job. Ah. That's on top of being employed. So, it's not enough na ginagawa ko yung trabaho ko, naghahanap pa ako ng pwede kong pagkakabisihan. Now, because of this website, like what I mentioned, I was able to travel the world. I met a lot of awesome people along the way. So, some of the people in these pictures... Uh, see si the guy on my that on the left, that's Sundar Pichai. He's the CEO of Google. So I was able to meet him during Google I.O. at the Google headquarters uh, in SFO. And the lady on the other picture, that's Cheryl Sandberg. She, she's the chief operating officer of Facebook. So I was able to meet her during uh, Facebook, I think, F8. That's one of their biggest uh, digital events every year that also happens in San Francisco. So if it weren't for Unbox.ph, I wouldn't have been able to go uh, to different parts of you know, Europe, to different parts of the US. I wouldn't have been able to meet so many people because I was just invited because you know, I put up a tech website. Now, through the years, I realized that for me to keep on doing new businesses and creating new ways to be able to uh, build new revenue streams, I knew that what I learned in corporate, for you to be successful, you need to build good teams and you need to pass on like uh, some of your responsibilities to other people so that you can go on and create new things. So that's what I did. So learning from my corporate experience, I built a team of amazing people. So the guys over here, Dewey is on the left, Leia after that, then you have Jamie and then you have John. So this is teamunbox.ph. Recently, I just hired three more people. So we now have Cholo, we now have Mars, we now have Dan. So I think the company is at around seven to eight people already. And it's steadily growing the man. Uh, and in the last year, just to give you guys an idea how big Unbox has become, uh, in 2020, uh, this June pa lang naman, the, the videos that we got, I think, hit over 5.6 million views. Uh, the website on a monthly basis gets anywhere from 380 to 700,000 unique viewers. So mind-blowing you numbers then for me. Imagine that, 370 to 700,000 unique people visit the website and read the articles that we create. So that is just mind-blowing uh, for any at any measure. And in terms of the reach of the Facebook page of Unbox, uh, we get anywhere from siguro mga 3 to 10 million people per month. So ganun kadaming tao na reach ng Facebook page ng Unbox.ph. Now in 2018, I decided to put up a new venture. So I decided to put up uh, my own my own YouTube channel. And this was born about by my passion for sneakers and shoes. So I wanted to create something about another hobby. Kasi ang na-realize ko, kung hindi mo pagkakakitaan ang isang bagay na mahal mo, nagiging luho siya. So hindi siya nagiging sustainable. But if you're actually able to turn it into a business, it not only does it become sustainable, you enjoy it, you become good at it, and it actually doesn't become stressful. Kasi sobrang nag enjoy ka sa ginagawa mo. So yun yung magandang bagay pagdating sa, uh, pagdating sa uh, digital, no? at saka pagdating sa mga gantong bagay. So again, 2018, I put up a YouTube channel. The channel now has 705,000 subscribers. I've uploaded 1,200 videos. I have shot, edited, and well, starred in all the videos myself. So walang team to. 
So in the last two to three years, all the videos that you see here, or 99%, were shot edited by me on top of doing my day job. So I upload almost every day, Mondays to Sunday, <laughs> on this YouTube channel, and that's all about sneakers uh, and gadgets. And, and to be honest, it's not stressful. I don't find it as extra work. In fact, sobra ako nag enjoy pag ginagawa ko yan. Pagtanggal ko yan ng stress. Feeling ko, pag hindi ko ginagawa to, mababaliw ako. Ganong level. Kasi para sa akin, it's therapeutic. It's a way for me to, to, to express myself. It's a way for me to talk about the things that I love. And it's a way for me to fund the best, the, ang luho ko pagdating sa sapatos, gadgets, tsaka sarilos, no? <laughs> so, yun yung YouTube channel. And then eventually, I decided to put up a website after the YouTube channel. So, uh, this, this is site.ph. It's a complementary website to the YouTube channel that I put up. And just so you have an idea of the numbers, uh, my YouTube channel got 32, was able to get 32 million views in 2019. Um, the website that I put up in May gets around 70 to 100,000 uh, unique visitors on a monthly basis. And my Facebook page, this was June, pa, no? so major updated, uh, reached around 6 million people uh, in just 30 days. So if I were to sum up like what I do in digital, in pictures, it would be something like this. It would be all about things that I love. It would be about shoes, about gadgets, about toys, about watches, about art. But the things that make me happy, things that make me smile. And the best thing about it is that all of these things make me money. So they're not just there to for me to enjoy. They're actually there to create a business for myself and for my family. And that I think is one of the most powerful things that you can do in digital. Because if there's one thing I wanna share with you guys today, and I hope that a lot of you take to heart at sana matutunan ninyo at dibdibin ninyo lahat, itong chart na to. Every time I do something, I ask myself, am I in the sweet spot? Ano ibig sabihin ng sweet spot? It has to be something that I love to do. It has to be something that pays well, that makes money, and it has to be something na kung saan magaling ako. Kung hindi siya check sa tatlong yan, there is probably a 90% chance I will not do it. Kasi if it's not something that I like, most chance, most likely, mabilis ang burnout. Mabilis kang tatamarin. Mabilis kang madedepress or mabilis kang madediscourage. And at the same time, you won't, you won't put in the extra effort kasi hindi mo gusto yung ginagawa mo. And if it doesn't pay well, it means hindi siya sustainable. Kasi like what I mentioned earlier, if, it, if you don't make money doing that, then chances are you will either run out of resources to do it or you will not be able to scale the business so that it becomes bigger and it can actually change your life in a significant way. And lastly, hindi ko gagawin yan kundi ako magaling dyan. Kasi may lahat naman tayong may kanya-kanyang strengths. Eh. Lahat naman tayong may kanya-kanyang capabilities. So I would rather focus on my strong skill sets than focus on my weak skill sets para I am always at my natural best. So yan ang aking guiding principle when it comes to business. Yan ang aking guiding principle when it comes to my career. Every circle here is important. And you need to be able to find that sweet spot. What is that middle thing? What is that one thing na mahal mo, na magaling ka, na pwede mong pagkakitaan? Kasi pag nahanap mo yan, hindi mo talaga mararamdaman na trabaho yung ginagawa mo. Kasi nag -e enjoy ka talaga. As in, kahit stressful pa yan, fight pa rin. Kahit may backstabbing ng mga office mate, fight pa rin. Kahit nakaka-discourage na kasi mahina benta, fight pa rin. Kasi mahal mo yung ginagawa mo, nag -e enjoy ka, and alam mo may potential yung ginagawa mo. So that's one of the key things that I want to... Uh, like impart with you guys today. Now, because of digital, you can actually make money doing what you love. Dati kasi imposible yun eh. Hindi naman lahat ng tao blessed na yung karir nila, gusto nila, di ba? Hindi lahat ng tao blessed na mahal nila trabaho nila. So, it's incumbent upon us that as we journey through life, that we hopefully find that thing that we love and that we enjoy. After college, my first job, I was a call center agent. So I was working for People Support along Makati, uh, Makati Aviata yun or Ayala Avenue. I can't remember na. So I was there for, I think, around I mean, maybe around a year. Uh, and while I tremendously enjoyed the time that I was there and I met a lot of people, I was able to create amazing friendships with people from all walks of life. 
Uh, and na-practice ng todo yung English ko. Kaya lahat ng vlogs ko English eh. Marakara. <laughs> Natutunan ko rin yan sa call center, di ba? So, uh, I realized that after doing it for a while, that I wasn't enjoying it. That it wasn't for me. And I wanted to to do something that I really loved. Kasi I asked myself the question eh, Carlo, do you see yourself becoming like a VP for operations? Do you see yourself becoming like a, a, a leader? a supervisor, a team leader in this organization. And truth be told, every time I ask myself that question, I would always say, no, hindi ko to feel. Hindi to para sa akin. So kahit, kahit medyo na, natutuwa ako sa mga tao at nag enjoy ako meeting new people, it wasn't something that I love. It was easy for me, yes, kasi it was just English. And okay naman ako mag-English, di ba? And, I, and, I, and I'm personable naman on, on the phone or whatever. And it paid well at that time. Pero it wasn't something that I loved. So I decided to to step back and step away from that. Uh, and and the lesson na natutunan ko dun is that I should follow what I wanted ba talaga and try to make money out of that. And at that time, adi ka ko sa Ragnarok. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung alam yung Ragnarok. Parang online game siya. Ngayon yata sa mobile na lang siya linalaro eh. Pero back then, sa PC pa siya linalaro. Dial up pa yung internet namin nun ha. So hindi pa siya yung uh, DSL or yung fiber that you guys know today. So, to make a long story short, I was able to build a career in gaming. I was hired by Level Up Games. I actually became the brand manager for Ragnarok Online. I became the marketing head for casual games for uh, Level Up. I launched games such as uh, Grand Chase. Yung ko uh, I was part of the team that launched uh, Fly for Fun, Pangya, and a bunch of other cool games here in the Philippines. And I spent a good five years in the gaming industry. And again, it never felt like work. Kasi sobra ako nag enjoy And lumalabas yung natural kong galing kasi mahal na mahal ko yung ginagawa ko. So that was the biggest lesson that I learned back then. The transition from Carlo, the call center agent, to Carlo, the gaming publisher or the game professional or whatever you want to call it. And when I learned that lesson, I knew that every single thing I would have to do after that, kailangan mahal ko. So, ang na-realize ko after being five years in Level Up Games, I knew I fell in love with digital. I fell in love with digital advertising. I fell in love with analytics. I fell in love with the idea of social media. I fell in love with Friendster. Pa no? So, I fell in love with Friendster. <laughs> so, so, ang nangyari, to make a long story short, that's when I decided to go head-on into digital. So, I jumped to Friendster. I worked there for a year, I think. Uh, and then after Friendster, I joined TV5 as their new media head. And then after being in TV5, I put up a digital agency. I ran that for five years together with my partners. We sold it after five years. I exited. And that led me to where I am today. So, kung makikita ninyo, my career has been all about uh, following what is it that I am truly passionate about. Kasi I knew that the reason was lumalabas yung tunay kong galing back then. So, yan ang one of the most important lessons that I want to share with you guys. Ano yung bagay na mahal mo? Ano yung bagay na pwede mong pagkakitaan at ano yung bagay kusang ka magaling. Kung ano man yung isang bagay na yon, kailangan yung mahanap yun. Kasi it will really unlock a lot of opportunities for you. Now let's talk about the circles very quickly. How do you find out what you love? Kasi hindi lahat ng tao alam kung ano yung gusto nila sa buhay. Hindi lahat ng tao alam kung ano yung mahal nila sa buhay. Di ba? So pag-usapan natin yan. You really just have to answer the question, what makes you happy? Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa rin masagot yung tanong na yan, kung ano nagpapasaya sa'yo, meron akong exercise na pwede ninyong gawin. Kumuha kayo ng pirasong papel. Pagkatapos sa pirasong papel na yan, kumuha kayo ng ballpen. Pagkatapos noon, think back to the earliest memory that you have about your life. As in, yung pinakabatang-batang memory mo. And then, try to draw a timeline of your entire life. And every time there is a powerful memory that comes to mind, uh, just spike up the line. And then every tas label nyo kung ano yung nangyayari doon. Tas every time may malungkot, sobra na powerful memory, i-draw down nyo in line. So it's like crafting a timeline for yourself. So tas i-label nyo lahat yon. And chances are, lahat ng mga ups ninyo, kung yun ba yung time na una kang sumayaw sa audience, yun ba yung time na kumakanta ka, yun ba yung time na nagsusulat ka, yun ba yung time na naglalaro ka ng games, yun ba yung time na nag-chill ka with your friends, Yung ba yung time na nagluluto ka ng food? Yung ba yung time na nanonood ka ng maraming movies? Kung ano man yun, kung ano man yung madalas lumabas doon, chances are, that's the answer to your question. That's the answer to your question. That is what makes you happy. That common thing that always comes up in that line. 
Now, let's say you have already found out what that is. So, gamitin natin sarili ko as an example. So, nakinari, nakita ko, ay, mahilig ako sa sapatos kasi nung bata ako, binila ako ng Jordan 5 ng nanay ko. Tapos pagkatapos naman, palagi ako nanonood ng Michael Jordan, palagi ako nanonood ng Chicago Bulls, palagi ako nanonood ng NBA, tapos sobra ako nahilig sa basketball tsaka sa sapatos. Tapos dinaanong ko yung dunks, dinaanong ko lahat, tapos ngayon may Kanye, may Yeezy, may Off-White, lahat yun trip na trip ko. So, sapatos. Ang next thing that you want to do, if you want to be an online creator, if you want to build like a digital tribe or a digital business, is you need to get that topic and then you need to scope your competition. Kailangan nyo tingnan kung meron ng ibang gumagawa. So, ang pwede nyo gawin, pwede nyo search yung topic na mahal mo sa YouTube. So, for example, if I were to search sneakers uh, back then in Jordans before I started YouTube, ang nakita ko, lahat ng gumagawa ng content on sneakers were outside the Philippines. Walang YouTuber dito sa Pilipinas that was reviewing shoes. Walang YouTuber dito sa Pilipinas that was unboxing shoes. Walang YouTuber dito sa Pilipinas that would focus on sneaker collections and actually go to outlets and stuff like that. So, na-realize ko, there was an empty space. Wala akong competitor dito sa Pilipinas. So, pwede ko siyang i-own. So, kaya ako siya ginawa. Kasi nakita ko na walang ibang gumagawa. So, it was a unique opportunity for me. Now, let's say, gagawin mo yan ngayon. Ang problema ngayon, sabi natin pareho tayong hilig, no? mahilig ka rin sa sapatos. Ang problema ngayon, marami na tayong gumagawa ng videos tungkol sa sapatos. The challenge is how can you be unique? How can you be that yellow umbrella in a sea of black umbrellas? How can you stand out? Kasi kung pare-pareho lang lahat tayo ng ginagawa, pare-pareho lang tayo lahat ng ina-unbox, pare-pareho lang tayo lahat ng sinasabi, bakit kanila pipiliin? Bakit kanila papanoorin? Kung papanood din na manonood na lang sila, manonood na lang sila ng established na. Manonood na lang sila na nandyan na. So there has to be something unique about you. And how you do it is called a tactic called dimensionalizing. What is dimensionalizing? Sabihin natin sneakers. Maraming types of content ng sneakers. Pwede kang maging malabig boy cheng na nag unbox ng sobrang mahal at sobrang hype na sapatos. Pwede kang maging malaset fowler na ang ginagawa mo, nagre-review ka lang ng lifestyle shoes. Pwede kang maging mala nightwing na nagre-review lang ng basketball shoes. Pwede kang maging James Michaelson na nagre-review lang ng running shoes. Pwede kang maging, sabihin natin, isang crossfit trainer na ang rene-review mo lang, crossfit shoes. Nakita ninyo? So, you can actually carve out your own lane within a bigger niche, within a bigger industry, so that you can create your own unique lane. So, you can be a yellow umbrella amongst black umbrellas. Brings to mind one of the sneaker YouTubers na, medyo, na sumikat na talaga, si Paolo Tomenes, di ba? So si Paolo, ang ginawa niya, tumutok siya sa ukay-ukay. Tumutok siya sa ukay shoes. Siya yung nagpasimuno nun. Siya yung nagpasikat nun. Kasi wala naman ibang gumagawa ng ukay-ukay sneaker content, di ba? Ngayon, meron na rin mga tao na nagpo-focus sa budget shoes. So more or less, naintindihan niyo na kung saan ako nanggagaling. Uh, another example, let's say gusto niyo maging tech reviewer. Mahilig kayo sa mga cellphone. Mahilig kayo sa mga kung ano-ano man. 99% of people reviewing tech on YouTube probably around 90%. Maramang karamihan diyan telepono lang ang rene-review. Pero wala pa masyado nagre-review ng sound system. Wala pang nagre-review ng headphones. Walang nag-specialize in reviewing wireless earphones. Walang nag-specialize in reviewing sabi natin smart home technology. Walang nag-specialize na nagre-review ng or gumagawa ng mga videos na how to at educational pagdating sa uh, tech. Walang gumagawa ng reviews ng mga mobile apps. Diba? So, yun yung mga nakikita mong potential na pwede mong gawin para wala kang competitor. So, again, you need to find a space that allows you to be unique in the digital world. Kasi being unique allows you to create uh, a unique community. Hindi ka nila compare to everybody else. And it allows you to really build a strong, loyal digital base. Yun yung potential na pwedeng mangyari dyan if you do that. Okay? Next. The next circle is what comes easily to you. Ano ba yung magaling ka? Here's the thing. Hindi lahat ng tao kaya mag-YouTube. Hindi lahat ng tao kaya yung pressures of being a YouTuber or being, sabi natin, on video. But the beautiful thing about digital is that you can make money and earn a living by writing, by taking pictures, by being a, you know, a, a model or Instagrammer or a, photo, a photographer. In short, you play to your strengths. Kung, kung magaling kang mag-video, pwedeng doon kang magsimula. Pwede kang magsimula as a YouTuber. Pero kung hindi kang magaling mag-video, magaling kang magsulat, pwede kang maging vlogger at kikita ka bilang vlogger. 
Ngayon, kung hindi ka magaling magsulat, pero sabi natin, witty ka, funny ka, magaling ka mag-memes, hindi pwede ka gumawa ng either Facebook page, Facebook community, or Instagram account, uh, doon ka sumikat. Sabi natin, magaling ka sumayaw, hindi ka magaling, hindi ka magaling magsulat, hindi ka magaling sabihin natin, uh, kumanta or whatever, hindi pwede ka maging ano, mga TikTok challenge, mga tipong ganon. So my point is, regardless whatever your skill is, there is most definitely a platform that's available that you can build and that you can monetize. So play to your strengths. Kung saan ka magaling, kung saan ka malakas, doon ka bumuhos. Next, what pays well? Paano nga ba pinagkakakitaan ang communities? Paano nga ba pinagkakakitaan ang digital? Yan ang ating magiging juicy topic for the next few minutes. In the next few minutes, I will be sharing with you guys tips on how you can monetize online assets so that it can actually sustain you, be it for your business or be it for your livelihood or be it for your family or kung sideline lang to para sa'yo. Ang sikreto pagdating sa digital monetization is this, yung nasa gitna. That is your community. That is your digital tribe. Everything and anything that you will do, if you take care of the people that follow you, if you take care of the people that watch your videos, if you take care of the people that read your content, if you do not break that trust that you have with them, they will support you. They will buy your products, they will watch your videos, they will read your articles, and every action that they do can earn you something. Every action that they do can actually generate income for you. So if you do not treat them well, if you do not make them loyal, if you do not engage with them, if you do not grow this base, if you will not, if you will not grow this base, maliit ang potential revenue mo. But if you're able to grow this, if you're able to engage them, if you're able to earn their trust, there are a myriad of ways wherein you can monetize digital. The secret of growing this is very simple. You give them value with your content. Value is uh, basically either content that gives them information that they can find useful, or if it's content that triggers an emotional response. Sabihin natin nakakatuwa, nakakalungkot, nakakakilig, those are two types of content. One is information, which gives education. Pwedeng reviews, pwedeng unboxing, pwedeng how-tos, or you can be on the emotional side. Pwedeng entertainment, pwedeng patawa, pwedeng drama, pwedeng mga skit, pwedeng sayaw, pwedeng good vibes, pwedeng malarafi tulfo, <laughs> na nangaaway ka lang. <laughs> so, yun yung types of contents that you can look into. So, that is critical. By the way, I mentioned earlier, important thing finding out what you love. Why is that important? Because that is the gel that will hold your community together. Building a tribe, building a community starts with having a shared passion, having with a shared love of something. So if you love shoes, you can build a community around shoes. If you love tech, you can build a community around tech. If you love dancing, you can build a community around dancing. If you love K-pop, you can build a community around K-pop. If movie junkie ka, then you can create a, uh, uh, a community around that. So, importante pa rin yung una ko sinabi, ah, yung what, it, what is it that you love. Kasi yun yung gel that will allow for you to build your community. And the content that you create is the one that increases their trust in you and that grows your community bigger and bigger and bigger. So, you keep on giving them value with your content so that more and more people join your tribe. You keep repeating this, you keep repeating this until you're able to build a substantial amount of followers uh, so that you can keep on growing it and growing it. And then eventually, you start building your monetization stack. Now, the common misconception by a lot of people is that you make money uh, on YouTube or on digital just by the sweldo, the salary that you make from YouTube. That is completely false because there are so many ways that you can monetize a digital community. So this is what I call Carlos monetization stack. Talagang Carlos eh. So, <laughs> pinangalanan ko na eh, no? So these are the different ways where you can make money out of building a digital community. You can earn through advertising. You can earn through brand deals. You can earn through affiliate sales. You can earn through merchandising and you can earn through your own product and service. In short, you can have up to five income streams when you are able to build a strong digital community. Limang ways na pwede kang kumita. Para ako nagbebenta ng network marketing na to. <laughs> Kulang na lang marunong ako magsulat ng pabaliktad. 
Di ba ganun sila mag-explain ng mga downline, downline? Babalik pa rin nila yung papel. Ito, pag ito ka, recruit ka rin ng dalawa. Ganun, ganun. Hindi yun ha, hindi ako nag-recruit. So, chill lang kayo dyan. Hindi ako nag-ibenta ng network marketing. <laughs> Baka iniisip nila, nag-ibenta ako ng ganun eh. But anyway, there are five different ways on how you can generate income. Now, I want to start with this, which is advertising. So, advertising happens when you're able to reach the minimum amount uh, required for YouTube and Facebook so that ads start appearing on your channel. And when ads start appearing on your channel, you actually get a very small percentage of every ad that appears on your videos. Yan yung mga ads na nakita nyo before or during your video. They're called pre-rolls or mid-rolls or whatnot. Now, the minimum requirement uh, to, to qualify for the partnership program of YouTube is 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Pag nahit nyo na yun, you will get an email inviting you to the partnership program of YouTube. And then you can start making money. Now, the big question is, Carlo, magkano ba ang kikitain ko sa YouTube? Magkano ba ang pwede kong kitain dyan? Pwede ba akong maging milyonaryo dyan? Pwede ba akong maging bilyonaryo dyan? Alam nyo, ang daming numero na lumabas sa Facebook na sa totoo lang, hindi totoo. Maraming nagsasabi na pwede ka kumita ng billions of pesos on YouTube. And from experience, I will tell you that that is not correct. But it doesn't also mean that you cannot make decent amount of money. Now, let's make an assumption. Let's say you have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and that you regularly come out with good videos and that those people regularly watch your videos and that they support you and that sabi natin your content goes viral every now and then. How much money can a YouTuber make? Assuming 100,000 subscribers regularly nag-upload, maganda ang quality of videos. Magkano ang pwede mong kitain? The numbers I will be sharing with you are from uh, interviews that I've done with other YouTubers as well as my own personal experience. If you have 50,000 subscribers and you come out with a video regularly, it's safe to assume that you can make anywhere from 10 to 20,000 pesos on a monthly basis. Again, this is a rough average. This is a rough estimate. And it really depends on a lot of factors from how many people watch your videos? Where are the people who are watching your videos? Uh, kasi pag yung views galing sa US at other countries, mas malaki yung kinikita mo. So again, this can change. This can vary. Now let's say you have 100,000 subscribers. I think it's safe to say you can make anywhere from 20 to 40,000, sometimes even more. Let's say you have 200,000 subscribers. You can potentially make 40 to 80,000. Let's say you have half a million subscribers. I think it's easy to say that you can make anywhere from 100,000 and up pagdating sa kinikita mo from YouTube. So this is just the money that you generate from advertising on YouTube. Yan yung cut mo sa ads na lumalabas sa mga YouTube videos mo. But again, let me let me emphasize. This is not true for everyone. It means for you to get these numbers, you need to be producing videos regularly. You need to be producing good videos. You need to be uploading regularly. Matrabaho siya. Hindi siya madali. Kung iniisip din yung mag-video ka lang kasi yaman ka na kagad, nako, you're in for a, you're in for a rough ride. Kasi getting to your first 1,000 subscribers is much harder than getting to your first 10,000. And getting to your 10,000 is much harder than getting to your 100,000. So the climb to 1,000 is so hard. And then the climb to 10,000 becomes a little bit easier. And then the climb to 100,000 becomes a little bit easier as well. Kung baga, nagiging gamay mo na, nagiging magaling ka na, nagiging sanay ka na. So you, if you, this is what you want to do, kailangan, while you are growing initially, you're growing from 0 to 1,000, may two things na importante. One, kailangan malakas loob mo. Hindi ka dapat mabilis manghina. Pag mababa yung views, hindi dapat nadedepress ka. Pag mababa yung views, ang dapat na approach mo, you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? Saan ako nang kulang? Masyado ba siyang boring? Masyado ba siyang uh, walang value? Wala bang nangyayari sa kwento? Hindi ko ba siya prinomote? Ganun dapat yung mindset. You should be celebrating your failures. Pag pumalpak ka, ibig sabihin nun, you can learn something. Ulitin ko yun na, pag pumalpak ka sa isang bagay, ibig sabihin nun, pwede kang matuto, pwede kang gumaling, pwede kang maging mas okay sa ginagawa mo. Hindi ibig sabihin na pag pumalpak ka sa isang bagay, na wala ka ng kwenta. Hindi ibig sabihin na pag pumalpak ka sa isang bagay, 
na yung ginagawa mo, pointless. Pag pumalpa ka sa isang bagay, may lesson yan. Pag pumalpa ka sa isang bagay, meron dyan sinasabi sa iyo ang Diyos. <laughs> na kailangan mo tingnan at kailangan mong matutunan. And believe me when I say that if you learn that, that lesson, na failure is something that can be turned into lessons, di ba, ano yun, turn your L's into lessons. Kasi sa sneaker world kasi, pag natalo ka sa raffle, ang tawag dyan L, di ba? Pag nanalo ka sa raffle, W. Ang, ang saying dyan, turn your L into lessons. Wag, wag losses, wag lugi, lessons. Kasi pag natuto ka, then it was worth it. Okay? So again, yan yung potential na pwede nyong kitain just on the YouTube advertising. Now, what makes good videos? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng magandang video? So, ito ang some examples or ito ang guide. I, I need you guys to remember three numbers. 15, 5, 8. When, what, why? So, first 15 seconds. You need to hook them in. Why do you need to hook them in? So that they decide to watch the video. Here's the thing. Not everybody wants to watch you, no? Ang manonood lang sa isa simula, malamang kamag-anak mo, tsaka mga kaibigan mo. Pero apart from that, hindi ka nila papanood. <laughs> so, so, if randomly somebody chances upon your video, you actually have the task of selling yourself and selling your content so that they keep watching. So they keep checking out your entire video. Kasi the longer a viewer watches your video, the more YouTube will promote your video on its algorithm. So pag maraming tao nanonood, sabihin natin meron kang 10-minute video, and maraming tao nanonood ng hanggang 8 minutes, ang gagawin ni YouTube, ipupush na yan. Mas lalabas yung video mo sa search queries, lalabas yung video sa recommended, lalabas yung video sa suggested videos. Pero kung yung 10-minute video mo, ang pinapanood lang ng tao, 30 seconds, hindi ipupush ni YouTube yan. So the quality of the viewership is important. Now, one way to get them to decide to stick to watch your entire video is in the first 15 seconds, you do either a cliffhanger or an outline. What is an, a cliffhanger? Let's say you are a daily vlogger and tatalon ka from a cliff to a lake. Sa, parang ganon. Ang gagawin mo, yung clip na yon na tumatakbo ka, tapos tatalon ka sa lake, lalagay mo sa pinakaunang part ng video mo. Pagkatapos nun, pagtalon, pag alis ng paa mo sa cliff, ikat mo yung video, tapos mag-start ka na. So that is what you call a cliffhanger. What happens is, yung tao, hahanapin niya yung part na yun. He will keep watching until he sees that part na tumalun ka sa cliff. So that is what you call a cliffhanger uh, technique. The second technique is what you call outlining. So what is outlining? For example, ano mo magandang example? Uh, you give them an idea kasi of what they can expect. For example, into, kanyari nag-vlog ako, kanyari nagbibigay ako ng, ng video. Uh, in today's episode, I will be sharing with you two smartphones. Two of them are some of the very best you can buy today. One is from Samsung. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And this is the new iPhone 12. If you guys are interested to find out which of the two phones is the best, san ba mas magandang camera, san ba pinaka-okay pang gaming, keep on watching. Matututunan nyo lahat yan sa video na to. Yes? So that's an example of an outline. You're setting the people up. You're setting their expectations so that they know what is it that they will expect. And they become excited. They want to watch. They keep on viewing your content. So yan ang first 15 seconds. The next technique is called every 5 seconds. Ano ibig sabihin every 5 seconds? Every 5 seconds, you use visual disruptors so that they don't get bored. Kasi ito ang reality. Napakababa ng attention span ng Pinoy. <laughs> As in, sobrang baba. Yan ang rason kung ba't sabihin natin nanonood ka ng probinsyano, mahilig silang mag-change angle. Yung parang zoom, tapos bilang change angle dito, tapos dito ulit. Parang kinari ganito, kinari nag-uusap tayo. Hawa ko ang camera ko. Ah. Hi guys, I'm Carlo, bla 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 bla. Oy, napansin nyo ba? Bla 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 bla. Oy, good yung dun. Ah, nakita nyo yun. So, ganun ang example ng uh, visual disruptors. So, tawag doon change angle. Pwede rin B-roll. So, habang nagsasalita ako, magpapalit, makita nyo napakaswabing paning ng telepono, napakaswabe na paning ng ng gadget. Or pwede rin sabihin natin visual aid. May lalabas dyan na animation. So those are visual disruptors. And you need that every 5 to 10 seconds so that people don't get bored. And last, as much as possible, you need to make your videos uh, hit at least 8 minutes so that if you hit 8 minutes, you can actually put more than one ad. Kasi you can actually put multiple ads if you hit, hit at least 8 minutes. My rule of thumb is that I put one ad every 4 minutes. So if it is a 10-minute video, chances are I have two ads. If it's a 15-minute video, chances are I will have three ads. So that's just a, another way for you to generate more money. Uh, 
And now, sabihin natin, gumawa ka na ng video. I'll share with you a quick tip on how you can amplify how much you earn. All you have to do is to actually repurpose that one video that you made, put it on a Facebook page, uh, repurpose it, and put it on a website that has Google AdSense, and then you can actually make money three times from that same video. Because if you hit the minimum requirements for partnership for Facebook, they will actually invite you to their partnership program. And every time my ads na lumalabas sa Facebook page mo, kumikita ka. Yung sa video, ah, yung mga before and in the middle. It's the same with websites. If you sign up for the Google AdSense program, pag may website ka at blogger ka, every time the banner ad appears on your website, you can actually earn a certain percentage. So what does that mean? Gumawa ka ng isang video for your YouTube channel, I repurpose mo for Facebook para kumita ka the second time around. I repurpose mo for your website para kumita ka a third way around. So parang tatlong beses ka kumita from the same material. And in fact, you can even upload it on your Instagram account and eventually you can make money out of advertising and brand deals. What are brand deals? Brand deals are when companies approach you and they ask you to promote a product or a service. For example, uh, Kanyari, nanonood kayo ng video ko. Nagre-review ko ng, uh, ano ba magandang example? So, kanyari, nagre-review ko ng G-Shock. So, this is the latest G-Shock, uh, GA2100. But before I get to the video, let me just give a quick shout-out to the sponsor of today's video, Samsung. So, Samsung has these new Galaxy Buds Live that sound amazing and that you can buy them for just uh, 5,000 pesos. And if you use the code CARLO and click the link down below, you get 15% off your first order. So that is an example of a brand plug or a brand deal. Pag ganun, binabayaran ka ng isang brand para i-plug ang produkto nila. So as you grow your communities, as you grow your social presence, uh, brands will start approaching you. And they will ask you to promote their product or their service. Yan ang tinatawag natin na uh, brand deal. So again, the concept is, you have your community, you keep on feeding them content, you keep on growing this community, and then in this same community will be your main source of business. Initially, when they watch you, you will get money from advertising. When you offer, when you're when they're big, you get offered brand deals. So again, hindi ka mako ng brand deals if it's not because of this. If they like you more, they will start buying your merchandise. Pero kung wala naman silang tiwala sa iyo at di ka nila trip, hindi nila bibili yan. Diba? And the same with these two other uh, ways to monetize. Now, what I'll do next, since we're almost one hour at naubos ko na yung oras natin, uh, <laughs> talaga nag-enjoy na kung ano na pinagkukwento ko yun. No? I'll just share with you guys a few more ways on how you can monetize. So, the next I'd like to share is affiliate sales. So, what is affiliate sales? So, affiliate sales is you join an affiliate program. Uh, Lazada has an affiliate program. Zalora has an affiliate program. There's a group called Involve Asia. And what happens is when you sign up for their program and uh, sabihin natin you want to promote a product on Lazada, every time somebody clicks that link that comes from your affiliate dashboard and they buy, you get a commission. So that's what's called affiliate sales. So you can earn anywhere, I think, from 5 to 15% uh, based on what you sell. So, sabihin natin, 10,000 pesos yung telepono, and somebody buys it, tas 5% yung commission, you get 500 pesos for every smartphone that's sold. Diba? So, again, babalik tayo dito sa pinakita ko. Kung malaki na yung community mo, mataas yung trust nila, and you actually endorse products that you use, that are good, and you send them the affiliate links, then doble na yung kita mo. You earn from your advertising, and then you earn from the commission that you get from selling the products that you plug or that you share. So, depende na yan kung gaano ka, ka kagaling mag-plug at gaano ka kagaling gumawa ng content on affiliate sales. Uh, one of the ways that I do that is I do my roundup video. So, for example, these are five shoes that every guy must have. First, you need to have like a triple white Air Force One because it is one of the most cleanest, versatile, comfortable sneakers that you can wear today. Number two, you need running shoes. Pwedeng Ultra Boost, pwedeng uh, Epic React na Nike. Kasi kung nag, ang, ang, ang running shoes, they also work extremely well for athleisure. Kailangan mo ng basketball shoes. Sabi natin, Jordan 3, para medyo cool ka naman tingnan. Kailangan mo ng sapatos na, uh, tawo ko dito, tamad shoes. Bagay ito sa pandemic eh. Yung iniwan mo lang sa labas ng bahay kasi ayaw mo ipasok yung dumi. So, beater shoes ang tawag dyan. 
and kailangan mo nang pang workout. Sabihin natin, mahilig ka mag-gym, bibili ka ng Metcon or bibili ka ng whatever. Now, if any of you guys want to buy those five shoes, nakalink siya sa baba, pwede nyo siyang bilhin sa Lazada. So, ang mangyayari, pag may mga taong pinanood yung video na yun, i-click nila yung link, bumili sila, meron akong cut. Gets? So, that's how affiliate marketing, affiliate sales works. Okay, ang dami. So, daanan na, ang dami pa. So, pag daanan natin yung iba. So, you can also do merchandise. So, if people start to follow your brand, they start to follow you, you can actually create your own products. So, I put up a website uh, that where I sell my merch. So, I have t-shirts, I have socks, uh, I have face masks, I have side bags. So, I have a designer that does all of the merch. And then we have a website that sells it and it's also available on Lazada. We even created like bundles, you know, parang t-shirt plus face mask, yung mga ganyan. So, ginawa namin yan as a side business. So, this one is actually doing really well, no? So, maganda yung negosyo namin sa e-commerce. So, yan yung example ng, uh, that's an example of, of what we call this, uh, merchandise. And the last way to make money is you can create your own product or service. Now, some people, they can actually branch out into consulting kasi they can actually offer their skills in content creation and in YouTube to brands. You can put up your own event na you can do on an annual basis. Pag wala ng pandemic at safe na, pwede ka gumawa ng sarili mong event. Tapos pwede ka kumita through ticket sales or sponsors. Or pwede ka actually gumawa ng actual na produkto na pwede mo ibenta. Kanyari ako, may ilig ako sapatos, pwede ako gumawa ng shoe cleaner. Pwede ko tawagin Carlos Shoe Cleaner. Kasi ibenta ko sa mga community ko. Di ba? So, that is creating your own product or service. Now, for me, apart from the merchandise and the products and the book that I'm writing now, uh, I also put up a talent agency. So, one thing kasi that I realized is that I've met so many YouTubers and content creators and I felt that they were being shortchanged because they didn't know how to charge properly. So, I put up the Unbox Creator Network, which is a company that manages mostly tech talents. So, some of the tech top tech YouTubers in the Philippines. We have Mary Bautista, Liz Tech, Isa Rodriguez, Jam, and a lot of other people we manage. So every time we close a deal, we get like a small percentage. So that's the company that I decided to put up on top of all the other businesses that I was able to do. So again, those are five ways on how you can monetize a digital tribe or a digital business. So hindi lang <laughs> yung kinikita mo sa YouTube. That is barely scratching the surface of the potential opportunities that you can make in the digital space. Alam nyo guys, nung panahon ng, nung panahon ng lolo natin, ang advantage nila, real estate. Kasi sobrang mura na lupa nun. So, lahat sila, maraming biniling lupa. E ngayon, subukan mong bumili ng condo sa BGC. Tingnan lang natin magkano sisingilin sa'yo. Siguro 20 million, di ba? Tinanong ko eh, nag, alam mo, nag, nagtangka pa ako eh. No? So, nagtanong ako, magkano ba kondo doon sa pinaka-high-end three-bedroom? Curious lang naman ako. Hindi ko naman alam kung bibiling ko eh. Curious lang ako. Muntik na ako malaglag sa poong ko eh. Kondo ah, hindi bahay ah. 40 million. 40 million. Para sa three-bedroom. Sa BGC. 40 million. <laughs> Pero, imagine nyo yung mga lola at lola natin. Nakabili sila ng lupa sa... Diba, sa mga subdivision, kung Blue Ridge man yan, or Saviorville, or Corinthian Gardens, diba, ang daming nabili nila na mga mura lang compared to today. Yung magulang naman natin, ang advantage ng mga yan, negosyo. Kasi nung nagtayo sila ng negosyo tsaka career, negosyo kasi wala pang kalaban. Eh nung tinayo naman si Baliwag, sino kalaban niya? Diba? <laughs> Kunti pa lang eh. Or nung tinayo sabi natin si 7-Eleven, sino ba kalaban niya? Wala pang masyado eh. So parang ang konti ng competition. Negosyo, pagdating naman sa career, dahil sila yung nauna, sila yung medyo nakaka, may edad na, sila yung mga bossing ngayon. Diba? Tapos tayo yung mga naghihirap na mga medyo bagets na sumusubok umakit sa corporate ladder. But a lot of the people managing the company are of course more senior. So yun yung advantage nila ng mga magkulang natin. Which leads me to the generational advantage that we have. If there is one advantage that this generation has, that is so misused sometimes, it's digital. Kasi this is the digital generation. 
kayo, yung mga nanonood ngayon, lahat kayo marunong mag-Facebook, lahat kayo marunong gumamit ng telepono, lahat kayo magaling kumuha ng picture, lahat kayo magaling mag-edit, second nature na sa inyong mag-edit ng video, second nature na sa inyong mag-edit ng picture, second nature na sa inyong magsulat for digital, gumawa ng memes, gumawa ng napakagandang content for digital. It is all second nature to you because that is the generation that was born in this era. Kayo yun. Your advantage, your generation's advantage is digital. The problem is, ito yung problema, most often, it is misused. Either masyado kayong naglalaro ng games lang, yun lang yung ginagawa nyo, or ang ginagawa nyo, nanonood lang kayo. But the reality is, the opportunities of digital are for those who are the creators not the consumers. So if you want to make it big in digital, you have to stop being a consumer. You have to start being the creator. Instead na nag adi ka maglaro ng ML, ba't hindi ikaw yung gumawa ng game? Instead na nag adi ka manood ng K-pop, ba't hindi ikaw yung gumawa ng vlog tungkol sa K-pop? Ba't hindi ikaw yung gumawa ng vlog tungkol sa Korean drama? Nag-gets ninyo? Kung ikaw tong adik sabihin natin na nanonood lang ng Netflix araw-araw, eh di ba hindi ka gumawa ng vlog reviewing Netflix episodes or Netflix shows? Baka maging movie critic ka pa. Baka maging, di ba? Baka, maging, ano, baka ikaw na ang susunod na nagsusulat sabihin natin sa mga websites katulad na Rapper or ABS-CBN or Spot.ph. If there is one strong message that I want to leave with you guys today is that you need to stop consuming and that you need to start creating. Because that's where you take control back from digital. Because the reality is, companies like Facebook, Netflix, YouTube, they have broken you down into a science. They know what kinds of videos you will click. They know what kinds of articles and headlines you will click. And they will constantly feed that to you so that you will keep on clicking and spending the most time possible on their platforms. It's the same thing with ML. They know what types of games you like. They know what types of characters you like. They know what types of meta will hook you in. They know what types of items will get you to spend kung, kung skin ba yan or kung ano man. They know you. And a way for you to retake the power back in the digital space is for you to lessen your consumption and for you to become the creator. Now wrapping up. One question that I get asked a lot, Carlo, where do you find the time to do what you do? Carlo, where do you find to do this? My school ako. Carlo, and dami ko pang kailangan gawin. Ano gagawin ko? I will share with you a principle that I have always followed, and that is the name of the community that I built. No? And if you watch my YouTube ta- channel, you probably see me say uh, Project 7 to 1 so many times. And yung pangalan ng merch brand ko is also 7 to 1. Uh, 7 to 1 is very simple. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you build your career. So for people who are working like me, we need to have a day job because we need to pay our bills. <laughs> Kailangan namin maglagay ng pagkain sa lamesa. So 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. you build your career. The secret is that when it comes evening time, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., you build your dreams. So 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you do your thing. You be a man, you be responsible, you be a, the woman of the house, the man of the house, and you take care of your business. You provide for your family. Magbayad kayo ng utang. Paaralin mo yung anak mo. Maging mabuti kang estudyante. Maging mabuti kang empleyado. Maging mabuti kang whatever it is your 8 to 5 is. Pero pagpatak ng alas 7 ng gabi, pag uwi mo sa bahay, doon ka matuto ng paano mag-code ng app. Doon ka matutong gumawa ng videos. Doon ka matuto mag-edit ng mga articles. Doon ka matuto magsulat. Doon ka maging YouTuber. Doon ka maging videographer. Doon ka maging dancer. Doon ka maging photographer. Doon ka maging cooking YouTuber. Kung ano man yung pangarap mo sa buhay na nag enjoy ka, na masaya ka, na pwede mong pagkakitaan, na magaling ka, gawin mo ng gabi. 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. And sobrang importanteng mensahe yan para sa mga batang nanonood ngayon. Kasi ito yung realidad ha. Pag tumatanda ka, yung 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. mo, umiikli. Kasi one, magkakaanak ka, magkakaasawa ka. So yung 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. mo, magiging 10 to 10.15. Or <laughs> baka maging ano na lang yan, 12 to 1.30. So to the people, to the kids, to the baguettes, to the to the students watching today, do not waste your evenings. Do not waste your 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Because that 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. is what will set you apart. 
that 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. is what will allow you to get to your dreams faster. Again, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you build your career. 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., you build your dreams. You build your tribe, you build your community, you keep on giving them value, you take care of them, so that eventually, your 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. becomes your 24-7. You can resign your job, you can do what they stop doing it is whatever they, they don't like doing and that you end up doing this full time you find that one thing that you love that pays well that you're good at and you start living the life that you were called for that the life that you've always wanted and the life that you feel will allow you to live the most and with that said maraming salamat po uh, if you want to follow me i'm on at carl ople on instagram twitter and facebook and youtube thank you and god bless everyone Boom. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlo Ople, for that very informative talk. So without further ado, we will be moving immediately to our question and answer part. We actually received a lot of questions from our viewers. It seems like a lot of them are really inspired to, pr to pursue digital content creation. So here is, our, here is our first question. In terms of looking for a topic to feature, what if the, to the topic that I am passionate about is already saturated and there are already other vloggers who are more credible vlogging about it? Should I still continue with it or change the topic? Um, if it's really the one thing that you like. But there was a, a tactic that I mentioned kanina, yung, mm -hmm. what they call it, dimensionalizing. Okay. So mm -hmm. if it's, uh, sabihin natin, mas, mas maganda sana if that person gave the topic so if para I can actually give him or her practical advice, mm -hmm. but you can dimensionalize it. So siguro if, if you can reach out to whoever that is and maybe he or she can tell, can Us. share what the topic is, baka pwede ako makapagbigay ng mas specific na advice. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So here's our next question. Sir, ano ang sekreto ng pag-boom ng isang YouTube, YouTube channel tulad ng mga low-key or, or ordinaryong mamamayan? I mean, if artista ka, given na siya, na mabilis dadami ang subscribers mo. Paano kami na mga low-key lang, sir? Salamat po. That is the question from Teacher Rich. Hi, Teacher Rich. So, ako, hindi naman ako artista. No, nagsimula naman ako <laughs> ng YouTube channel ko. Wala naman ako following, di ba? So, and I know a lot of people who did the same. So, you have Mary Bautista. She has over 1.2 million subscribers now. She's the top tech <clears throat> YouTuber in the Philippines. Uh, you have Alvin Tristec. He started last year lang reviewing laptops and he's now at over 100,000 subscribers. Uh, si Paolo Tomenes, hindi naman artista yun eh, di ba? Parang sales assistant siya sa isang tindahan. Tapos nagtayo ng ukay-ukay vlog. He now has over, what, seven, mm -hmm. 500,000 na yata yung subscribers niya. Ang sikreto dyan, dalawang bagay. Number one, uh, consistency. Kasi okay. sa totoo lang, the more YouTube sees that you regularly upload, the more the U YouTube will promote you. Mm -hmm. Importante yan. Kung, kung once a week ka lang mag, kung once a month ka lang mag-upload, eh di paano ka, di ba? Paano, paano yun? Malabo yun. So number one is consistency. Number two is a growth hacking mindset. What is a growth hacking mindset? Growth hacking is simply testing out multiple theories and then adjusting your strategy so that you focus on the thing that works the most. Ano po ibig sabihin yan? Pwede kang mag-isip ng five topics ng video, si try mo yung lima. Tapos kung ano yung pinakapatok, di gumawa ka pa ng mas madaming ganun. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. So you constantly learn and you constantly pivot. Then you said sabi ko kanina na one of the most important things in becoming a YouTuber is that you learn from your you learn from your failures and you turn those fa failures into lessons. So thank you, thank you, sir. So that's consistency and growth hacking mindset. So the third mm -hmm. question is very interesting. This is about sir about a monetization program. Hi, sir Carlo. I am very much interested with Facebook and YouTube's monetization program. Which rewards higher CPM? Or I think this is cost per mil. This is from... Wow, Plantito. I love uh, From a blogger, sir. This is uh, from uh, our Plantito vlogger. So, alam nga yung CPM, cost per mil. Oh, nga. Nagulat ako dun na. Well, YouTube usually has higher CPMs. Okay. okay. But there's nothing it's stopping YouTube. you from... Up, there's nothing stopping you from uploading on both. Kasi sabihin natin the CPMs of Facebook are half. Or sabihin natin 25% of the CPMs of YouTube it still means that you get 25% more money, di ba? <laughs> so, maximize all the platforms that are there so that you can keep on growing the base that you have. Mm. So, so if you can upload it on YouTube, you can definitely upload it on Facebook also. Maximize. Yeah. Now, 
Um, this is another question, probably our last question. This is again all about, you know, monetization. Sir, will I be taxed if I earn through digital platforms? This is from Mr. Pinoy Investor Channel. Ako, uh, I would strongly recommend that you pay your taxes. Uh, I pay my taxes. Uh, all the digital businesses that I do, from a YouTube channel to the, I actually incorporated the company that 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 uh, funnels all the revenue that I generate. Uh, across all the digital businesses that I have. Uh, if okay. you guys are starting out, um, you can register. Because eh? I know if your revenue is below 3 million, diba, you're like tax exempt. Parang mm -hmm. may mga mm -hmm. classing, ano, eh? Amen. We have so, exemptions. Okay. Oh, uh, pero you need to register. Pa rin. And, and alam mo, it's important. Why? Because once you start getting brand deals, hindi ka, hindi ka babayaran ng brand kung wala kang resibo. Oh, nga, without the official receipt. <laughs> oh, oh, kailangan mo ng OR. So, so kung gusto mong long term, Kung gusto mo talaga mag-isip ng negosyo at hindi mo lang iniisip na sideline yan, maganda na yung mag-register ka na, na. Alam mo, in fairness to the BIR, in fairness to DTI, they've made it so much easier to register. In fairness to them, uh, mm -hmm. they, they really made ways to, to digitize their operations. And in fact, I heard from our good friends, uh, si Mona Brea, he's a sobrang advocate ng ng pre-paying your proper taxes and stuff like mm -hmm. that and digitization. Alam ko BIR has embarked on a digital journey so that eventually you pay everything online. Hindi mo na kailangan pumunta sa hindi lang pay, pati register as in the entire process will be all digital. Mm -hmm. So wow. sana umabot tayo sa ganun. So <laughs> legit kayo kasi pag legit kayo, mas madaming ibibigay sa inyong opportunity sang Dios. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you very much, everyone, for all your questions. I'm afraid we have run out of time. We've learned a lot of things today. Uh, first, digital is so powerful, it can change people's lives. Building content is, you know, beyond taking pictures, shooting videos, and writing features. It's all about creating and supporting your own community or digital tribe. That's what we learned from Sir Carlo today. Building your new revenue streams means forming new teams of amazing people who share the same passion, same eagerness to be successful with you. Another thing we learned today is that the internet is an information and entertainment juggernaut. With all the clutter, what you need to do is to find your own space in the digital world. If you can't find your own space, create your own space. Create your own unique positioning. The possibilities are limitless. Mr. Opless, um, simple secret in launching a successful digital empire has been, has been revealed today. And that is finding your sweet spot. How do, you, how do we do it? Three things. Do what you love. Do what comes easily to you. Do what pays you well. And to end this, like what Mr. Opley said, stop consuming, start creating. There you have it. That concludes our pep talk for today. On behalf of the FEU Career and Placement Office, we would like to thank Mr. Carlo Opley for his precious time and also to our students, faculty members, and employees for joining us. We do hope that you have learned a lot from this webinar. I hope you will join us again in our future Pep Talk episode. Our next topic, Career Prep 101, successfully finding your career in the digital landscape with Mr. Ryan Joseph Dizon, the talent supply chain and recruitment lead of Accenture. That will be on October 21st, Wednesday also. Just check the Career and Placement Office Facebook page from time to time for updates. And as we end this, may we invite everyone to join us in singing the FEU hymn.